Hello everyone and welcome to this new video from Free Dreams 106 channel. Today's new video is dedicated to UForge, this amazing software that allows us to create real masterpieces. In particular, today we are diving deeper into a super useful tool to use in combination with this software. I'm talking about the TD1, a small tool designed by Ajax3D that allows us to instantly measure the TD of our filaments. In this video, we'll take a closer look at what this tool is, why it's so useful, and what options we have if you want to get one. Plus, we'll assemble it together and stay tuned until the end, because I'll give you three tips to make this process easier. So, let's cut the chase and get into it. As you can imagine, I have quite a few spools in my lab. But do you know how many I've calibrated for you, Forge? Yeah, um, not many. <laughs> partly out of laziness, partly because I'm used to always using the same filaments with UForge, most of the spools I own are not yet calibrated for use to with this software. This is where the TD1 comes in. But what is this TD1? As I mentioned in the introduction, the TD1 is a small tool that allows us to measure the TD of our filaments as well as the RGB code, giving us the ability to calibrate and add the spools we have to our library super fast. For those who don't know what the DD of a filament is, I'll explain it briefly, but I invite you to check out the guides I've created about UForge in the From Zero to UForge playlist, which I've dedicated to this software here on this channel. The TD is the key value of our UForge works because it measures how transparent a filament is and allows us to create shades for our 3D printed masterpieces. For this reason, it is essential to correctly calibrate the TD and the color of a spool in order to have an accurate preview of the final result. To do this, tests are usually used, but they require interpretation. However, this takes time and filament as well as estimating the value by high. With the TD1, on the other hand, we will be able to automate this process and make it objective. Until recently, the TD1 was quite difficult to find, as it was only available on a few websites and in limited quantities. However, Hayax has recently partnered with BQ, so now we can buy the TD1S if you want our instrument already built and ready to use or we can purchase the necessary PCBs to build it and the parts needed com to complete it. The last option we have is to find all the parts ourselves and follow the guide of the sales source version. I will leave the links to all the components in question below in case you are interested. BQ kindly sent to me the board to build the TD1. So today we will assemble this instrument together. So let's get to work. To build the TD1, we will need a series of components. You can find the list on Ajax Patreon. In particular, we will need to refer to the components of the kit version by checking the photos in the corresponding guide. These are all small electronic components that can easily be found on AliExpress, Amazon or your favorite electronic website. As you can see, I have them here on the table, along with the 3D printed parts that serve as the structure. Along with this, we will need a soldering iron, a screwdriver, and a piece of filament that we will use to fix the pieces together, and that we will cut with our favorite snippers. Let's start assembling it right away. First, glue the spacer to the OLED screen and then insert the display into the printed structure, securing it with pieces of filaments in the appropriate channels. 
and mount the board on the screen, soldering the display connectors to the PCB. Now we can cut off the excess part of the connectors so that they can fit well into the channel at the top. Now we can solder the connectors to the RGB and brightness sensors. Then we insert the two sensors into the central structure, securing them with filament segments as well. We can now insert the 7mm sphere and solder the connectors to the second PCB. Now we can mount this second board on the sensor structure and solder everything together. We can insert this newly created block into the box of which we mounted the display Enjoy the two UP in the two units with pieces of filament. Last soldering the connectors on the Raspberry. Before mounting it on its structure, we flash the firmware by connecting the Raspberry to the computer while holding down the boot button. Then we copy the UF2 file found on IX Patreon to the Raspberry screen. Now we can mount it on the structure and fix the two halves of the TD1 together. And voila, we are done. The assemble is complete. All we have to do now is connect the TD1 to our computer to load the license. We will have to purchase it with a $10 Patreon plan, but you can just buy it for one month when you activate it. Then you can follow the instructions on the website. So here is our TD1, I've wanted to build it for a long time and to bring it to the channel, so I'm really happy to finally be able to explore it with you. It's a really useful tool if you love UForge, because it will allow you to calibrate your filaments in a matter of seconds. But let's look at the three tips I want to share with you to make this process as easy as possible. One. Remember that this, this is a process that requires a fair amount of soldering skill. If you are not very experienced, I recommend watching some tutorials and doing some tests before attempting to build the TD1, because the soldering will be critical to its proper functioning. And remember that you can always buy the TD1S if you don't feel comfortable building it yourself. Two. Before you get started, watch my video and read the instructions on our YAX website so that you understand how the parts fit together. 3. If you have helping hands, they can be very useful for your soldering works. These are structures with pliers, um, some kind of arm, on which you can fix your components so that you have your hands free to hold the solder and soldering iron. If you like electronics, I highly recommend you buy them. I'm very happy that now BQ offered PCBs for TD1. This allows us to find them easily, leaving us the freedom to purchase the rest of the components wherever we prefer, but greatly simplifying our work compared to the completely self-sourced version. But now I'm curious. Have you tried this tool yet? Let me know in the comments below 
And in the meantime, if you like this video, you might also like this.